Hello, I'm Daniel Keogh. I'm one of the judges for the Big Blog Theory, and I'm here to share with you my opinion on what makes a good science blog in order to help you guys decide on Australia's best science blogger. Firstly, good science writing is the kind of stuff that makes you feel intelligent. Clear, precise and intelligent writing is pretty hard to come across in your normal everyday press, but when you find it in a blogger, it's pure gold. Ed Yong, who blogs at Not Exactly Rocket Science, is an outstanding example of this. What I love is that he doesn't just skim over the findings, he'll take you through the very specifics of a piece of research, including its methods, its result, and more importantly, why it's important in the world of science. And all this in only 800 words. Writing this good makes you realise that science, no matter the topic, can be comprehended and it can be really freaking interesting. Second point, a good blog does the hard work for you. The ones I find I can't live without are the ones that bring you the best of the rest of the web. Because simply you don't have enough time to go around, search the internet and find everything interesting about your topic of science. So when someone's already doing that for you, that is incredibly cool. Vaughan Bell, who blogs at Mind Hacks, is unbelievably good at this. The blog is a fantastic resource for everything interesting in psychology and neuroscience. But these blogs aren't just a collection of links, they're far more than that. They actually help to summarise big articles, they critique them and they put them into greater context of science and culture, which makes it all the easier for you to find the stuff that interests you. Finally, a good blog needs character, because the way I think about it, Subscribing to a blog by putting it in your favourites or your RSS feed is sort of like taking it out on a date. And if you want the relationship to last very long, the other person needs to be pretty interesting. So blogs that are really creative, engaging and have a great personal style are the kind of blogs that are worth committing to. SciCurious is a blogger I've been going steady with for a while now. She used to blog for the once mighty scienceblogs.com group until she left in anger after they invited PepsiCo to write a science blog about health and nutrition. Which is sort of like inviting BP to your university in order to teach marine conservation. She now blogs here. What's great is that although you never know her name, she'll only ever refer to herself as Psy and usually in the third person, she has real character. Her posts are creative, they're humorous, and she uses multimedia really, really well. Signing up to blogs like these makes the whole experience more personal. Kind of like making a new friend that's way smarter than you'll ever be. So there you have it. Great writing, interesting links, and an engaging personal style is what it takes to be a good science blogger, in my opinion. And all of the blogs that are currently in the finals for the big blog theory have these kind of qualities in spades, so I'm not really making it easy for you. Voting closes soon, so you better hurry up and vote for your favourite. And keep your eye on this space to see who is crowned Australia's best science blogger.